On this channel so far, I've tended to focus on popular stamps. The Wonders of America had 204 million stamps printed. The Bugs Bunny stamp had 378 million. And as I explained in those videos, the Postal Service chose those subjects and designs with the purpose of getting collectors interested. So how about a stamp from 1984 that had 439 million copies made? That must have been a subject that people really loved. And really, who can blame them for getting hyped about 1890s railroad cabooses? So obviously something different is going on here. In this video, we'll talk about definitive stamps with a particular focus on the transportation coil series, which this is one example of. Let's dig in. If you go to the stamp section of the USPS online store, you're greeted with a broad range of different designs that you can purchase. The primary ordering here is by date, and you can tell when I'm recording this because the July 2022 stamp is near the top. But I bet the average American won't ever see most of these stamps on a letter they receive. Now granted, most mail doesn't have a stamp nowadays, but if it does, it probably has a flag stamp on it. I know that because this year's design, which I have a cover of here, had several billion copies printed, uh, the same as every flag stamp that gets printed every two or three years. There's also an option on the Postal Service's shop to filter for stamps that are worth less than a standard First Class Forever stamp. And there are some weird choices here. Here's a five cent stamp issued in 2016, and it's only available in coils of 3,000 or 10,000. Actually, if you look back at the breakdown of flag stamps, only a tiny percentage of them were printed in sheets, which is how most stamps I feature on this channel come. Most of the flag stamps were printed into coils. The difference is that most stamp designs the Postal Service puts out each year are commemorative stamps. As the name implies, they commemorate something, they celebrate it. It could be an anniversary. For example, every state, when it hits a multiple of 50 years since its statehood, gets a commemorative stamp. But it could also be a person or a place or a cultural icon or an abstract concept or really anything. But commemorative stamps are also temporary. They're usually only printed once and available only for a limited time, and they may even destroy unsold stock after a couple years. One notorious example is the set of stamps for the TV show The Simpsons, issued in 2009. The Postal Service printed a billion of these, which would be almost twice the number that any commemorative stamp had ever sold before, and only 318 million of them actually got purchased. That's still a lot, but the leftover 700 million or so ended up getting scrapped instead of being available for years. The other major class of stamps are definitive stamps. Now, there's no strict definition separating definitive stamps from commemorative stamps, but in general, definitive stamps tend to be printed in larger quantities across multiple printings and tend to be available for a longer time. They might also cover denominations other than the standard first class letterate, like forever stamps do. They're also the stamps that are usually used by people who use a lot of stamps, and that's where the coils come into play. Most of the flag stamps actually go into coils of 100, like this. Uh, they're mostly purchased by the public, and you can actually buy little dispensers for them from office supply stores or Walmart or Target. The bigger coils, up to 10,000, are for use in bulk mailing machines. I'm not going to drop thousands of dollars to buy one of those coils for this video, but this is a strip from one of them. You can see how the stamps have small gaps between them to make it easier for a machine to separate them off the backing. As I said, the line between definitive and commemorative stamps can be blurry because there's not just the flag stamps. Definitives were the only stamps for the first 50 years or so of U.S. stamp history, but they still commemorated people. The first U.S. stamps in 1847 honored George Washington, the first president, and Benjamin Franklin, the first postmaster general. They weren't printed in limited editions, though, and they weren't made to be collectible. That wouldn't happen until 1893, when a set of stamps promoting the Chicago's World Fair went on sale. Definitives expanded their subjects as the years went on, usually redesigning across denominations every 10 or 15 years or so. Still, they tended to focus on prominent men of history, especially presidents, and classic American landmarks. From 1938 through 1954, the predominant definitives were actually all presidents, with the exception of a few half-cent denominations. These were nicknamed prexies by collectors. The first real change in the presidents and landmarks approach to definitive stamps came in 1965, when a more diverse group of people were represented, at, at least relatively speaking. Frederick Douglass, Albert Einstein, Lucy Stone, and Eugene O'Neill were featured, among others. In 1975, the Postal Service went a completely different direction with their Americana series, which didn't have people at all, but objects that represented American ideals. 
In 1980, the Postal Service went back to the norm with their Great American series, but alongside it, they started another new series. Traditionally, a series of definitives could be issued as sheets, or as booklets, or as coils, just like the flag stamps are today. But in 1981, they decided to go a different direction and issue a series that only appeared on coils. They also decided to go the route of the Americana series and feature objects instead of people as subjects. And they decided to go with a single theme, transportation. That brings us to the Transportation Coil series, which was issued from 1981 to 1995. The first one issued was an 18 cent stamp, which was the first class letter rate at the time, featuring a Surrey, which is a type of doorless carriage. More were released in the following few years. Some are familiar forms of transportation, like a locomotive two cent stamp and a motorcycle five cent stamp. Some are old versions of familiar modes, like the one cent omnibus, or just bus today. Some are a bit weirder. For instance, there's a stamp for a baby buggy, but it's worth 7.4 cents. 210 million of these were printed. There's a 5.2 cent stamp with a sleigh on it, but it gives us a clue to what's going on here. The mail wagon and handsome cab do as well. These fractional denominations are for mailings below the standard first class letter rate. At the time, this was called third class mail. Later, it was changed to standard mail, and now it's called marketing mail. These require permits to be able to use. They don't sell them on the USPS store today and businesses and nonprofit organizations use them for large-scale mailings. The different rates depended on what precise type of mail they fell into, and whether the mail was pre-sorted, or used the zip code plus four digits, or whether barcodes had been applied by the organization in advance. New denominations were issued throughout the lifetime of the transportation coils, especially as postal rates changed. We got a school bus and a crazy-looking tricycle in 1985. We got a popcorn wagon and a tugboat in 1988. We got a lunch wagon and a canoe in 1991. By the end of the series, there were 51 different modes of transportation featured, with 60 or so total designs, if you count variations. The series ended in 1995, when the Postal Service moved to issuing non-denominated postage for bulk mail, meaning that the cent value wasn't printed on it. This solved the need to keep designing and printing new stamps every time postal rates changed. Confusingly, a mini-series of these were related to transportation, but they weren't the same thing. So that explains why an 1890s train car was able to sell nearly half a billion stamps. Today, if you want an 1890s caboose to sell a lot of copies, make it Grover Cleveland's. My boy was thick. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to check out some of the other ones on my channel.